Let's go! We've got alien looking stuff here. This is so cool. We're talking about ferrofluid. What is it and what are the possible uses for ferrofluid? Okay, so ferrofluid is very cool. It's one of the reasons why I got so excited about science. Because seriously, look at that thing. It looks like an alien. It looks like it shouldn't do what it does. It looks like magic. But it's not. It's science. So what is ferrofluid? Well, ferrofluid is a colloidal liquid. And what is a colloidal liquid? That just means that there are two substances that don't dissolve in each other. It's not like salt water, because when you mix sodium and water, they actually mix together and the sodium dissolves completely in the water. Not so with ferrofluid. No, ferrofluid remains two separate things. Usually the carrier liquid is oil and the microscopic nanoparticles are iron oxide or magnetite. Now I could get into surfactants and why they can't clump together, but there are other videos that do a really good job on that already. So I'll link those up here if you want some additional learning. Suffice to say that there is one other step. It's not just the carrier fluid and the nanoparticles. There is a surfactant that completely covers the nanoparticles and then repels from each other. So there's technically three different parts of ferrofluid. Now magnetite is very magnetic and it's ferromagnetic. So if you had a chunk of lodestone, which is just magnetite, and you brought a magnet near it, it would be drawn towards the magnet. And if you were to rub that magnet all over the lodestone, eventually that lodestone would itself become a magnet. It is ferromagnetic. Now things work really weird when you get to small sizes, and these particles inside the ferrofluid are very, very, very small, typically around 10 nanometers across. To give you a sense of scale of how small that actually is, an atom is about one-tenth of a nanometer across. So each of these little particles that is suspended in the fluid, this colloidal liquid, actually is about 100 atoms across. That's very, very small. Now that's still too small, so pull out one of your hairs, or don't. A human hair is approximately 80,000 nanometers across, which means that each of these little particles floating in this colloidal liquid very, very small. You could fit thousands and thousands of them just across the width of one hair. So yeah, very small. All this to say it turns into essentially a liquid magnet. And a liquid magnet that has been designed perfectly so that the surface tension, how well the liquid holds together, and the viscosity, how sloshy it is, how thin it is, it matches up perfectly with magnetic fields. So when you draw a magnet close to a ferrofluid, it turns into this hedgehoggy spiky ball thing because those spikes are in alignment with the magnetic field of the magnet that you're bringing closer to the ferrofluid. It's so incredibly cool. Let's look into the history of ferrofluids. Now ferrofluids really are a modern invention, so this is going to be a lot shorter than some of my other historic features. In the early 1930s we had magnetic suspensions, but they were crude. They're essentially a mixture of iron oxide powder, magnetite powder, mixed with oil. And you mix them together and they have some properties and nowadays I can make them. I've actually made them and if you want to go see what ferropaste looks like, that's what it looks like. It's not as impressive as ferrofluid. It wasn't until the early 1960s when scientists actually started to figure out how to make a magnetic, a liquid magnet as it were. And this was for rocket fuel. Yeah, because in the early 1960s we were trying to win the space race and suddenly looking up in the sky in the outer space there's no gravity to draw the fluid or the fuel downwards or upwards or anywhere you want it to go. So Stephen Pappel in, was working for NASA at the time in the early 1960s and he thought maybe we could magnetize the fuel in outer space so then we could just turn on magnets and they would be drawn toward wherever we want the fuel to go. It's not a bad idea. Ultimately it didn't work. He did obtain a US patent for ferrofluid in 1965, but uh, it didn't really work because now NASA was kind of moving on to the solid fuel. There were too many impurities in it to actually be used as a reasonable fuel in outer space. However, NASA could still see the benefits of having a liquid magnet at their disposal. So using their funding and a few of their scientists and the Avco Corporation, they managed to actually prove that 
this was worth investing in. This was worth trying to figure out. And so a new branch of science was actually officially recognized, ferrohydrodynamics, of how liquid magnets actually work in nanoparticles and all that fun stuff. Let's look at some of the applications of ferrofluid. Now, it's not used for fuel. That was its original purpose, to take people into space, but that's not what it is now. In fact, most of the uses of ferrofluid are more future-based. We know that it's going to be really, really cool, and there might be some unimaginable breakthrough using ferrofluid that we can't even imagine yet. But for now, it's used mostly in speakers. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you're listening to me saying things to you right now. So that means you probably have a little bit of ferrofluid next to your ears somewhere, because most speakers use ferrofluid inside of their construction, both to dampen the sound and to create perfect seals, because ferrofluid is very low friction. Now, some of the future uses that we can see ferrofluid maybe being used for in a medical sense, maybe super targeted medication dispersal. So you could inject someone with a bit of ferrofluid that has some medicine within it, and just using magnets, you can guide that anywhere you want throughout the body. And of course, it's used in science demonstrations because it looks like magic. So that, you know, it kind of actually worked. It got me interested in science, and maybe it'll get you interested as well. Thanks for watching. This is Destructive Creativity, and I am Jonathan Allers. We'll see you next time. We have new stuff coming out every single Wednesday morning. Bye!